the male authors today we are going to be speaking about the 20 books ooh, that i read taichi yamada in 2021 the first kiss the first relationship the first intercourse ooh, ooh. i definitely definitely highly suggest this one hi <laughs> and welcome to another video on my channel this time is going to be in english and it's going to be on one of the three main topics that the videos here on this channel will be about and the three are on books, <laughs> travels and lifestyle. Since I'm currently living in Paris, those will be mostly Paris focused videos. If you're new here, each and every one of my videos has subtitles. So if you would like to follow along this video with English subtitles or even have a translation in Russian or in German, go ahead and turn on the subtitles uh, down there and you can press on the little settings button and then you can choose the language that you would like to have your subtitles in. We will be speaking about the 20 books that I read in 2021. To the stats of what I've been reading in 2021, there are certain criteria that I try to follow to keep my reading as diverse as possible. One of those is paying attention whether the books that I read were written by men or women. And this year, I wasn't paying attention to that, so it was literally just like picking up the books as they were going by book club reads or new releases or things like that. So this year, 30% of the books were written by women and 70% were written by men. And to illustrate that a little bit, this pile whoa, over here, this represents the female authors. And this one over here stands for the male authors. Quite a difference somehow. <laughs> the next point that I keep track of are the exact languages of the books that I read. I had one book in French, one book in Ukrainian, five books in German. This pile over here, all of this was in English. Another criteria that I pay attention to is whether the books that I read are fiction or non-fiction. These are all my fiction reads. And for the non-fiction ones, that was 60% of the books, so it's this pile over here. The last category that I track is by the type of ratings that I give to the books. We had four books that were rated with two stars. We had seven books that were rated with three out of five stars. We had four books that were rated with four stars. And we had five books that were rated with five stars. I'm going to do little reviews on each of them. I decided to order the books in the order of the ratings that I gave to them, starting with the worst of them first. Let's save the best for last and start with the first one is Das Licht by T.C. Boyle. This got two stars from me. This is a translation of the original book in English, kind of the story of how a family gets into this organization that end up taking psychedelics with this doctor. It's all about addiction, how you get into it, why it's difficult to get out of it once you're in it. It has a lot of psychological insights, but I found it really really bad. I found that it dragged on way too long, it should have been edited down. I really struggled through this one. The second book that we've got is Just Like He by Nick Hornby. Well, this got two stars from me. It was a bit better than Das Licht. The cover is beautiful, so at least uh, kudos for designing this. It's about an interracial relationship, white woman dating a younger black man living in London and pretty much exploring the dynamics of this relationship of race, of professional background, and I found it really cheesy to be honest. I couldn't really get invested into it. I didn't expect much from Nick Hornby, I'm sorry, I'm not a fan. I did not suggest it. The third book that we've got is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I gave this one two stars. It's pretty much about a woman, her life is an entire library of books and each book is a different version of her life so depending on micro decisions that you take that you end up in a different life it's supposed to be hopeful and inspirational making you enjoy life more and it does bring that but to me once again it was just too cheesy <laughs> too predictable i knew straight away the way that it would end i was really disappointed with this one unfortunately the next one we've got are the book lectures of Daraya by Delphine Minuit. I gave this book 
two stars. I really didn't like it that much. It's a French author and this is the translated version of the book in English. This tells the story about a hidden library. With the war starting in Syria there was a little group of activists that decided to save books from people's houses and create a library out of it. The author has interviews through video, whatsapp, phone calls, with the people over there. It felt a bit flawed, superficial. I was not a fan of this one. I'm gonna skip the order for now because it makes sense to go over to this book next. A serious Secret Library. But this one got five stars from me instead of this one having just two out of five stars. I found this one when I was writing my review for the book collectors of Daraya and it actually is about the exact same story. That little library in Daraya described by a different author, I found this to be much better researched. It gave you more background on the conflict in Syria in general and I felt like it gave more depth to the characters. If you're curious about the story definitely go for Mike Thompson's book. Book number six is The One Thing Worth Doing by John Pope. It got three out of five stars from me. I was really excited about this book because it was written by an author who is within one of my book clubs here in Paris, the Paris Anglophone Book Club. It's about an American who has a background in the Silicon Valley who moves to Paris to manage real estate. It's all about his uh, experience living in Paris, adapting to the culture here, the French people. Somehow it didn't stick too much with me and I also found some typos in it. It's self-published so it might be linked to that. But otherwise the style it's written in was beautiful. It was nice to read it but it's not something that I would necessarily suggest to you as readers. Book number seven is Strangers by Taichi Yamada. I did enjoy reading it. It's a story written by a Japanese author about a divorced scriptwriter who moves into a different apartment and kind of like his day-to-day -day life. His parents are deceased so he somehow stumbles into a, kind of like a ghost world through them. The weirdness of it reminded me of Haruki Murakami. It had those contemplations on life that I read in Yukio Mishima's work about. It even had something of a Paul Auster type of style if you're familiar with any of those authors. In the end it didn't feel too memorable for me so that's why I settled with a three out of five star rating. Book number eight is Bonjour Tristesse by Françoise Sagan. It was written in the 1950s and it's about a teenage girl spending her summer in the south of France. It somehow reminded me of a heterosexual version of Call Me By Your Name. It was enjoyable. One thing that you have to be aware of is that there are a lot of sexist remarks within it. The main character is very vain. It's a coming of age story, so you're going to be reading all about the first kiss, the first relationship, the first intercourse, which I'm not necessarily a fan of. And I think what makes it more impressive is the fact that the author wrote it when she was 18, so I think that's why it's so popular in France. Book number nine is The Forest of Wool and Steel, in German, Der Klang der Welle, by Natsu Miyashita. This was a three out of five stars for me. This is a very special book to me because it's the first one that I received from a publishing house before its publication to review it. It's about Tomura. It's his coming of age story living on the island of Hokkaido in the north of Japan and his quest in life of finding his career as a piano tuner. There are a lot of references to music, uh, to nature, and it's especially popular in Japan because of this island it's situated in. I enjoyed reading it a lot, so it really put me kind of like almost in a meditative state when I was reading it, but finally the characters were a bit too flat for me. Book number 10 is A History of Ukraine by Alexander Pali. I gave this one three out of five stars. So I've got two books over here because I actually read them in parallel, in Ukrainian and in English. So this is a great book if you want to know more about the history of Ukraine, its people, the traditions about its language. It has tons of illustrations. It has literally illustrations on every other page. So it kind of like adds to your understanding. The English version of it had a lot of typos and formatting errors, which is 
too bad. Then one little point that I was not a fan of was the fact that it was very past based. So I wish there was more about up to date current events. It didn't quite manage to get out of this historical textbook kind of style. So it's very dry, but otherwise it's a very valuable book. Book number 11 are the 21 lessons for the 21st century by Yuval Noah Harari. It has a variety of topics that it speaks about. There is AI, robotics, social and political issues, the freedom of speech, the freedom of human beings, immigration, terrorism. There's a lot in here. It is very interesting to read through. I really had to force myself to continue reading it, but I think it's a very valuable book from which you can learn a lot. Book number 12 is Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. It won the 2020 Booker Prize. It's a story about young Shuggy who grows up in the 1980s in Glasgow. But most of all, a story about alcoholism and growing up with a parent that is suffering from this addiction. It took me quite long to get through this one, almost three months. You should read up on the trigger warnings. At times it reminded me A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara because it is just like so deep and dark and depressing so you have to be ready for this one. It was a bit difficult with the Scottish accent and way of speaking so I'd say it was an interesting read from my side. That was the last 3 out of 5 star book and I'm happy that we're now getting to the top rated ones and the 13th one is called Schreibtisch mit Aussicht and it was edited by Ilke Piepgras I gave this one 4 to 5 stars Unfortunately there is no English translation for now, it's only available in German It's pretty much an anthology of 23 different essays by 23 different female writers describing their writing process, what it is like to be a writer professionally. There were some essays that I just could not stand. The quality is very varied. I had some favorite ones in here. For example, the German author Marianne Lecky, Deborah Levy, uh, Zadie Smith. There was one by John Dede that was really great. Uh, so it's very diverse. Book number 14 is My Body by Emily Ratajkowski. This got 4 out of 5 stars from me. I really, really enjoyed it. It touches on a variety of topics. Feminism, misogyny, patriarchal structures of our society, what it's like to be a woman in the society, what it was like for her in the industry that she worked in. I related to this one much more than I would have expected to. It's written in a very raw, honest and vulnerable way. She doesn't shy away from uncomfortable topics. So the only point why I reduced one star was because of one of the topics, the thin culture, which could be disturbing to younger readers because it's not reflected upon. This one was one of my favorites this year. Book number 15 is The New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. I devoured it and I loved it. So if you were to read one book this year, I think this might be it from my pile of 2021 books. It's a spiritual guidance type of book on ego, on the society, on the humanity in general. And it pretty much makes you understand how human beings function, what our emotions are like, how we can live a more peaceful and happier life. I have highlighted just like a ton of passages in here. The only criticism and why I took one star off the rating were the mentions of religion, Christianity and Jesus comparisons, which is exactly what I'm not looking for if I'm reading a spiritual book. So for me, that's the only thing that bothered me while reading it. Otherwise, it's great and I would really suggest this one. Book number 16 and my last 4 out of 5 star book was Couchsurfing in Saudi Arabia by Stefan Ott. Stefan Ott is one of my favorite German authors. This is the fourth book that I read of his. Within it, he's traveling in Saudi Arabia by using couchsurfing. You get to learn a lot about 
its culture, traditions, some historical parts. It was written with a lot of humor. I liked it a bit less than his couchsurfing book on Iran and on Russia, for example. So that's why the four out of five stars. But otherwise, I highly suggest this book and to check out his other books as well. Now we're on to the five star books, my favorite ones of the year. So number 17 was How to Break Up with Your Phone by Katherine Price. I am rereading this one for the second time, first read it in 2020, and this book is great. I think I'll continue rereading it and I would suggest it to everybody who is the owner of a smartphone. It tackles not only suggestions of how to have a healthier relationship with your phone, but also it goes into the psychological explanations of our addiction to it, why we behave a certain way around our smartphones, and really kind of like breaks down the functioning of our brain. It's written in a very light and humorous kind of style while teaching you a lot of things on the way. I highly suggest this one too. Book number 18 is The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. This one was absolutely amazing. I loved reading it. It's about his personal story of being a doctor and his patient's neurological disorders. He's pretty much telling how the human psyche works, how the brain works. The most important thing about it is the way that it's, it's written. It's very humane, tender. It goes so much deeper than just a medical analysis. It makes you contemplate life, takes you through all kinds of different moods. You can feel inspired from it, you can feel happy when reading it, or even super sad and even shedding a tear over one story or the other. Number 19 is the book An Informale in Kiev by Dmitry Kapitelman. This has really special meanings to me because this was the second book that I got sent by a publishing house in exchange for a review. I found the style it was written in absolutely stunning. It's beautifully, beautifully written. It's the author's story, him being a Ukrainian and having to go back to his home country, to the Ukraine, to Kiev, to deal with some bureaucratic issues while he himself is already living in Germany. Being Ukrainian myself, this really had tons of relatable moments for me. It's very touching, one of my favorites of the year, I highly suggest it. This one does not exist in a translated version yet, so this is for the ones that read in German. And finally, book number 20. What I Know About Running Coffee Shops by Colin Harmon. So I would say that this is my favorite book of the year. It has this personal meaning as well because I went through an intense two week training on how to create your own coffee shop. And this book pretty much covered everything that we went through during that training. So it's, yeah, highlighted tons within it. I think this would be really interesting for tons of different people those who are interested in opening their own coffee shop, literally this gives you the basic knowledge on everything, but also those who are curious how a business functions, how a coffee shop functions. So the author himself is the owner of multiple specialty coffee shops in Ireland, so he knows what he's talking about. Even if you just enjoy going to cafes and you'd like to know what goes on in the background, why you're paying the price for the coffee that you're paying, it's a really great book. It's very humorous and you just want to read this one in a single sitting. On top of that, it's a really beautiful edition. It has tons of kind of like graphs in it so that you really get an understanding for whatever he is explaining. I definitely, definitely highly suggest this one. Thanks a lot if you watched until the very end. If you enjoyed this video, leave a little thumbs up on and below. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books if you have a similar opinion on it or if you felt completely differently about one of the books. I'll be happy if you'll stop by to watch some other videos of mine that will be coming in the future. One of them will be on the 63 books that I read in 2020. So stay tuned and don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel if you would like to be informed of all the new upcoming videos. See you soon. Bye!